I put this together for agency owners, consultants, and marketing professionals who are feeling just overwhelmed, like they have too much to do, there's not enough hours in the day, and are always behind, can't get ahead, always missing deliverables, getting bitched at from clients, and losing clients at the end of retainers or during retainers, and having trouble scaling your service, your agency, whatever it is that you do to the next level. And if you're having these issues, then you might be lacking. And I hope you guys get this joke. Is anyone getting this joke? No? Yeah. Crickets? Yeah. All right. Should I get it? All right. I was going to yeah. say the one. All right. Then you might be lacking uh, internal processes and project management. And I like to make a joke about it because this is really some boring stuff. Uh, but I promise you, man, like this is number one reason process and project management is the number one reason why in just 18 months we've worked with some amazing clients um it literally started as me 18 months ago i was sitting in my apartment by myself we now have seven local employees a whole slew of offshore people which i'm going to talk about and we've experienced a steady heavy revenue growth this is an actual screenshot i cut out the numbers for obvious reasons we just went through a valuation process this is actual revenue in the bank that we've grown month over month, over 18 month period. And it's 100% because of project and process management. We're not doing anything that you guys don't already know about. It's the ability to get things done at scale uh, while enjoying my life. I'm really big on this, man. Life is too damn short to be sitting in front of a computer for 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Life is for living. And if you follow me on Instagram, which I hope you do, I'm just gonna run you through. I went to Medellin a couple months ago. I was in Boston a few weeks ago. I was in Vegas not too long ago. I was in DC. I was in Valencia. I was in Barcelona. I was in Paris. I was in LA and I was in Madrid. And I'm actually going to Cancun tomorrow. I'm sitting here looking at my suitcase. I cannot wait. And I'm able to do all of these things while still managing a growing multi million dollar agency because of project and process management. I'm able to run an agency, run a team, manage 40 plus clients, all from a laptop, from anywhere in the world at any time of the day. It does not matter because of the systems that we have in place. So what I'm gonna show you in this webinar is I'm gonna show you the proprietary systems that we've developed that's gonna alleviate a ton of your issues. Again, if you're feeling like there's not enough time of the day, if you're struggling to juggle clients, if you can't really get a handle on growing an agency, I promise you, watch until the end because I've never talked about this before and nobody has ever talked about this before, I promise. So number one, it's all about the process. Joke number two, anyone get it? Joel and Embiid, any basketball fans? No, okay, strike two, okay. <laughs> So I do a ton of consults with other agencies. I've actually stepped that up a lot this year. And the first thing I ask all the time is run me through your process. And the number one answer I get is it depends on the client. You know, everything we do is custom. It varies. We really don't have a process because we're an SEO agency. We're custom. You know, we, we do things custom. You know, and I always call bullshit. I got a lot of pushback on processes because a lot of people feel like they don't need them or they're too good for them or they do custom work. So uh, they're too valuable for them. But processes are, I'm telling you are the most important thing about really scaling any business, but especially service-based businesses. And a, a process is a roadmap. I mean, SEO in itself is overwhelming. There's dozens of things that you need to get done two days ago. And a process gives you the framework to get from A to Z and allows you to manage it without pulling your hair out. And a process is not set in stone, it's malleable. I mean, a lot of pushback that I get is again, people think that like everything is custom, we do special work, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, dude. Like. Most people think that a process forces you to do things a certain way. It's the opposite. No two SEO campaigns are the same. They vary depending on site. I know that just as much as anyone does, but it's much easier to move tasks around than to build them from scratch. Having a set process and framework gives you something to start with on day one, which saves you a ton of time and headaches and also client headaches as well that are always asking you where stuff is. So a process saves you money. You know, a huge key to SEO and life, in my opinion, is getting other people to do work for you. Uh, if you want to hire someone to do a technical audit, you're going to have to pay them out the ass, right? If you say, I need somebody to do a technical SEO for me, they're going to charge you 120 grand a year. But if you give someone a specific process, they don't need to be able to know that much. They just need to know how to do basic things. If you have it written down step by step, checklist, check for checklist. So a process also lets you clearly see gaps. I used to work as a consultant a long time ago for a company called Deloitte, and I was in a, in a a uh, department of the, the company called business process reengineering. We literally would build processes for the biggest companies on the world, target, Best Buy, et cetera, et cetera, and then test them and break them down and rebuild them. With a process in place, you know exactly what you need to do on a certain date. If you don't know how to do it, you can clearly see the resource gap and you can hire someone to help you out. It's easier to hire someone to just do keyword research or to just write content than to do end-to-end -end SEO, right? If you, again, if you try to hire someone to do end-to-end -end SEO, they have to know how to do a lot. 
But if you hire someone to just do one specific thing, you can plug in the gaps with that talent. It allows you to focus things at the task level, not the aggregate, which I'm going to talk about a lot more. So specifically though, a framework is not a process. So looking at a service like SEO, a framework is a high level template to perform a service. We all know how to do SEO. I mean, you can just Google it and you'll see it. It's not rocket science, right? I mean, if we look at SEO, the framework of how to do it, we do a technical audit. This is roughly speaking, of course, keyword research, on-page optimization, content creation, and link acquisition, right? Now let's deep dive in this technical audit in itself. So what's the difference between a process in a framework, a process is a detailed roadmap on how to execute a framework. I need to repeat that. A process is a detailed roadmap on how to execute that framework. Anybody can learn SEO. It's really not hard. If you want to make money, you have to know how to execute it. I need to repeat that again. If you want to make money, you have to know how to execute it. Again, I do all these agency consults. I work with a lot of people that are a lot better SEOs than me, but they don't know their ass from their elbow when it comes time to nuts and butts and actually do the work because they're lost, right? They know how to do keyword research down to semantic algorithm and all that stuff. But like, if you don't know how to execute it at scale, especially, you're not gonna make any money. And I'm sorry not to be shallow, but we're in this to make money. We're in this to make a living and to live the life that we wanna live. So let's look at a technical audit. Let's look at how to build a process for a technical audit and how we do it. So for example, you're gonna to have to get access to the search console, analytics, tag manager, whatever it is that you need. And that needs to be assigned to somebody. I like to take care of that or usually my project manager does, right? After that, you're gonna to have to crawl the website with Screaming Frog. That's gonna be done by somebody else. I'm not gonna get down there in the details and do it. They need to review the robots.txt, review status code, review 301 redirects, et cetera, et cetera, send to the client, right? So you can start to see how even a part of the framework break can break down into a process. It's really not overly complicated, but this is where things get a little bit more difficult and you have to have some a little bit more detailed knowledge on how to do these things. So what we wanna do is turn these processes into checklists. Ignore that, et cetera. I told you this is the first time for me reviewing this. So I like to take everything that we do and account for it with a step-by-step -step checklist or a sub-process as we call them internally. So for example, again, going back to this reviewing through one redirects, you can see I have it here in yellow. That is a piece of the process of doing a technical audit. Even reviewing a 301 redirect can be broken down into a specific checklist or process, right? So if we're gonna review 301 redirects, what needs to be done? Yuri, the same person doing the technical audit, needs to open up script, the crawl of Screaming Frog, needs to literally filter it. I'm getting down to the details here. Filter column L for status code, cross-check the 301 redirects, check for redirect tops, et cetera, et cetera. So again, sound processes put the pieces in place to let you scale your service. And we're gonna talk a lot more about this coming up. So. What I had to develop though too, because you can already start to see how this stuff can stack up and get overwhelming, was a system and a method to manage all this stuff when it comes to client delivery. And that's something that I call the task deliverable action method. We call it TDA internally when I'm talking to my team. That stands for task deliverable and action. So let me run you through this. So marketing is a lot of work, right? I mean, when you're working on one website, it's a lot of work, but 50, uh, we needed to develop a system within our processes to make sure that the work we were doing was not falling between the cracks, right? So for example, when paying for a service, there are certain expectations on the work that need to be performed. Keyword research, again, if we're selling SEO, keyword research, link acquisition, content creation, most of the time these are built into proposals in contracts or service agreements, right? We call these deliverables, pretty straightforward. Well, we all know what those are. But deliverables are large items that require a lot of work to complete. Keyword research is not something that you can just kind of crap out, right? It needs a significant number of things to go into that, right? Identifying keywords, finding volume, competition, et cetera. I call these tasks, right? Tasks are the things that you need to do in order to complete a deliverable. Pretty straightforward. That's tasks and deliverables. Finally, more often than not, there's additional action items that come from deliverables, right? So just because you do keyword research, you're not done there, specifically when you're working with clients, specifically working when you're working with larger clients who don't really wanna go in and do the work themselves. That's what they pay you for. So implementing page titles, publishing blog posts, et cetera, et cetera. These are action items that can easily fall through the cracks if not properly managed, right? Like you send a blog post to a client, you send keyword research to a client, what happens? It sits there for four months and they come back at the end of the contract and say, hey, uh, we never implemented this. And you say, yeah, but we sent it to you. And they say, no, that's not how it works, right? So what we need to do is we need to implement what are called action items, right? So now we have tasks that map to deliverables. And after deliverable is sent, we create action items on the backs of those to make sure that these things are getting implemented for a couple of reasons. Number one, for client management purposes, but number two, to make sure that what we're doing is actually going to get executed and we can actually see a result from our services. So damn it, I messed this one up, apologies. So let's look at an example. 
Uh, so again, if the deliverable here is keyword research, the tasks that need to go into keyword research, again, just generally speaking here, this is not how we or anybody should be doing it, but you need to find the keywords, you need to find semantic keywords, you need to find volume and competition, you need to map those keywords to pages on the website, right? You do those tasks and you've got a deliverable in an Excel file, whatever you want to do, that's keyword research that you can send to a client, you can send to your boss, whatever it is, however you're doing SEO. The action items on the back of that is somebody needs to approve those keywords and prioritize those keywords. We generally have the client do those. So what we do is we assign those action items to that client, right? And we can continue to follow up on those action items during the reporting period, et cetera, which I'll talk about in a minute. After that, we need to add those keywords to the rank tracker so we can report on them every month. I have that in dark yellow because that's something that we do internally. So you can start to see how this flows from tasks to deliverables to action item follow-up. So we're going to come back to this a little bit later, specifically when we run through our system specifically. So what I like to do is build processes in advance, right? And what I'm going to do is just run you through live. Um, one of our processes that we use and our, the, the project plans that we use. So we have a set project plan that we use for every single client that we take on. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up right here. I have it right here. So what you're looking at is a Google sheets file and it is a 12 month project plan for just a client. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna show you how I would build this for a new client that we would take on. So for example, what's today's date? Today is the 29th. So I like to start clients on Mondays only. Uh, and what we've done here is we built in these formulas into Excel. So whenever you change the date, it changes the deliverables, right? So we have a due date for Webris. This is us, our agency internally, and we have a due date for the client, right? So the due date internally is the date that we need to get this done. The client due date is the date that we need to send it to the client. So you can see I've built in a grace period. You know, I've just done that using Excel formulas. It's pretty straightforward. If you haven't used Excel, you should really learn it. But all I've done here is build in a grace period for all of our deliverables here and just staggered it all the way down for 12 months, right? So anytime I'm taking on a new client that's on a different date, I just change the date and you can see how all these deliverables, they get changed to match that new date. So that in itself saves me a ton of time, right? Then what I wanna do is, let's just say I'm doing this for Cotton, right? So we change the client name to Cotton and you can see how that cascades down. Again, I've already got the owner. This is the person responsible built out ahead of time. And you can see here how I've got the deliverables and tasks mapped out within a project plan. So let me just show you this real quick. So we talked about keyword research. Let me just filter here for keyword research. So you can see here the deliverable, this is what we're gonna to send to the client is keyword research and the tasks that we need to get done are find main and secondary keywords, volume and competition. That's one thing that's done by one person, Bonnie. And then Maria, who's a manager level, she's gonna build the keyword research analysis deck and send it to the client. So you can see here that one deliverable has two tasks also assigned to two different people, but it's for the same client. And you can see here the dates, it's pretty straightforward, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got the status here. We've got all the different status codes that we can use when we're going through it, which I'll, again, I'll show you a little bit more detail. We've got monthly report dates built in. We've sent reports every 30 days. So you can see how this is staggered out for every 30 days. And you can also see how this starts to cascade down over time to do less and less work, which I'll talk about in a little more too. Then we've got, some, we've got some additional cells over here for templates. So for example, keyword research, when I talked about sub processes, right? We have, a, we have a template for everything that we do, a technical audit template. We have a keyword research template. We have an on-page template. We have a link building strategy template. We have all these templates already built out in either Google Sheets or Google Slides. We just drop a link in here, which again, I'll show you in a minute of how we do that for a real project plan. Same thing with the presentation. So the keyword research deck, this is a slide deck that we build in Google Slides. We just dropped the link here as a template. So when Maria is coming in here to work on this deck, instead of going through and digging and finding the template, she just clicks this link, makes a copy, and she's got one specifically done for cotton right there. And then a training too. So like I said, I like to hire people pretty much off the street and pay them next to nothing. Don't tell my employees that, but I'm able to do that because we have detailed trainings that are built out, which again, I'm gonna show you later. So everything that we do here, you can see, it has a due date, it has an owner, it has a deliverable, a task, a status that the project manager can come here and easily check again, which I'll show you in a minute how it works in real time. And it's got a template, a presentation deck if necessary, and then a step-by-step -step training for that sub process that somebody who we can literally hire off of the street with little to no experience to do. And then of course a notes column over here. We've also got different templates that we build out. So again, so this is the base template that we use, right? But so for example, let's say that Cotton has a little bit different of a website. He's a lead generation website. Then we have a lead generation template for that. Same thing with local. So the tasks and deliverables automatically flop around a little bit. So you can see here 
how just having a base template saves you a ton of time when it comes to client onboarding, but it's really easy to fix because it's built into Excel. So again, if I'm talking to client, we have a web, we have a kickoff call, right? I'm talking to client and he says, you know what? Like uh, my GMB page is really important. I want to prioritize this. I can simply just change the date on his GMB page, which might be in month three. So audit the GMB page and move it up to month one. So you can see how these processes having one in place is going to save me a lot of time, but it's also easy to just flop and manage because either way, if you're doing local SEO, you're going to have to do a GMB audit. You're going to have to build citations. You know that ahead of time. So why not just build that out and have a plan for it and plan for it ahead of time so you're not wasting time uh, later in the campaign. So that's how we manage our, uh, that's how we uh, build our base process. Uh, we, again, we do in Google Sheets, which I'm going to show you a lot more of in a little bit. So this is important to me. Um, you know, I know Cotton, I haven't really touched base with Cotton in a while about his exact service anymore, but I have a different feeling on a lot of things, as he mentioned, and again, it's not for better or for worse, it's just to present you a different side of things. You know, your time is too important to do a lot of these things. So you're gonna need to get help because it's really hard to scale on your own. I still haven't figured out how Cotton's done it. He won't tell me, but so for that reason, I had to develop my own system. So service businesses are a lot of work and internally at Weber's, we like to over deliver on work uh, for client management purposes, right? So we send a lot of deliverables to clients. Uh, we try and send two to three a month just to over communicate, to just kind of beat them to death and just kind of like drown them in paperwork. So they're not constantly hitting us up and annoying us and asking for shit. We're way ahead of the game and just constantly sending them stuff, right? It's just a client management technique that we use uh, and it's how we built our system to do so. So even if you're an in-house marketer, you need to be focused on impact items, right? Like if you're doing all the work, if you're logging into somebody's WordPress site and changing title tags and writing meta descriptions and adding internal links, like you're never gonna grow past a certain point. If you are the head of your business, if you want to build an agency, you need to be focused on growth aspects. You need to be focused on getting clients, keeping clients happy and finding new ones. The service in itself should run itself. It needs to be operated like a product and less like a service, which we're gonna talk about. So when you have these systems and processes in place, it allows you to hire cheaper labor. Like I had mentioned, when everything is mapped out like a checklist, almost anyone can do it. Like I said, if you want to hire somebody to do SEO, like if you want to hire me to do SEO, I'm going to charge you out the ass for it. But if you have a specific need to just have keyword research done and just have on-page optimizations done and just have somebody writing blog posts, if you can hire for just that person and they have a checklist for how to do their job, you don't need a 120K person a year. You can go hire someone for four bucks an hour in the Philippines to change title tags. It's really not hard to do. If you have a process and a system to do that, you can save yourself a lot of money and you can scale your agency a lot faster than traditional agencies do. So we developed a method for hiring and managing staff that's conducive for scaling profitably. Like I said, just like Ford, just like Amazon, just like McDonald's, having airtight processes allows you to function like an assembly line. Like McDonald's doesn't have the same person checking orders and filling up drinks and building burgers. No, they have one person who's flipping patties. They have one person who's slapping cheese on. They have one person who's checking your orders. That's it. That one person is responsible for one thing. They don't ask them to do too much. So they're able to hire people with a lot less experience and pay them a lot less money and be profitable by selling $1 hamburgers, right? So this is the by far the best way to manage any operational based business because it's just a lot more profitable. So I'm gonna run through some hierarchies here. I used to work at uh, the biggest digital agency in the world and through that experience, what I learned was really how inefficient these large agencies were. It was just staggering. I mean, the way that they're set up is they can only have their people internally work on one to two projects at a time. And plus, because they have to charge so much money, clients hated it because they knew they had people that were just sitting there picking their ass half the time and they were getting billed for it. So the way that they were set up, these big agencies, they have a VP or salesperson who charges an insane amount per hour. And they bill, usually bill like three to four hours a month, not much, but they just, you know, $1,000 an hour, they just bill the client for it to do nothing. Then you have an account team who pretty much just, you know, like strokes the client's ego and they charge for that too. They don't really do much except for send emails and, you know, have happy hours and stuff like that. Then they have the PMs or the program managers, the project managers. And underneath the PMs, you've got basically like the senior consultants or subject matter experts. SME stands for subject matter expert. Uh, and those are expensive consultants. And then underneath that, you generally have two, two or three junior consultants. And these junior consultants, so for example, let's say this is for an SEO contract. You've got all these people, but the only people really doing work are the two junior consultants. And those people tap out very fast because they're asked to do pretty much everything. They're asked to do, a this was me. I literally had to learn SEO on the fly because they were like, hey, 
We need a search console audit. You need, they need a technical audit. They need a uh, keyword research. And I was having to do all of that stuff. And it was great for my growth as a person, but it was terrible for the business and terrible for the client because they were getting somebody who wasn't experienced in all this stuff, but they were getting billed out the ask for it. It's just a highly inefficient way to do things. And then my time as a person, I was tapped out. I could only work on one or two projects at a time, which means that the agency in itself can, is losing out on an expert's time because I'm only working on one or two, one or two one to two projects at a time, which then means you have to go out and hire more and more people. And if you've ever had to hire local smart people, it's getting harder and harder to do because these people are really hard to find and they're really expensive. So what I had to do was come up with a different structure for my agency. I didn't want to go down that route. I wanted to do something much different, just like Cotton did. And my team is responsible to do only one thing, one thing. I don't ask them to do anything else than just one simple thing. I have one person that only does keyword research. That's it. I don't want you to do on page. I don't care if you know what a link is. I don't care if you know what content marketing is. The only thing that you have to do is find keywords. That's it. Just get really good at it. And I can train that person to be an expert at keyword research because it's not rocket science. We're not doing brain surgery here. We're not curing cancer or selling people shit that they don't need on the internet. It's really not that hard to do and anybody can be trained to do it. So this allows us to rifle through client work like an assembly line and we have yet to hit capacity and my team works on every single client. We have 40 plus clients and every single one of my team members, both local and offshore works for every single one of them. And that allows us to scale infinitely and scale profitably because again, I'm not selling time for money. There's an age old adage and it's so ironic because all these like SEOs per se all the time, like don't sell your time for money, but yet they build their agency on a time for money model, right? If you're doing the consulting model, like the big agencies and most agencies do, you're billing per hour and then you hit a ceiling. You can only get so profitable. It's just not smart on how to do it. So the way that we do it is we have an operations manager. This was me for a very long time. And if you're just getting started, this will probably be you too. This person is local in Miami. I now have somebody who does it for me. We have then we have subject matter experts that are in Miami too, and they're responsible for one vertical. So we have four of these people. We have one person who does SEO, right? We have one person that does content. We have one person that does links. And we have one person who oversees like technical analytics, website dev, stuff like that. So we have four of these people. And underneath these people, we've got these specialists and they're all offshore. So like I said, underneath these SMEs, these subject matter experts in Miami, my subject matter experts don't do any work, by the way. They just review it and send it. So for example, even if you're responsible, if my, my content person, my link person, this is a perfect example. My link person, she's 22. I hired her off Craigslist. She's right now, she's in Thailand for two months, just vacationing, and she's still working. She's still able to do this because she's managing these processes and these systems. And she's not having to do like 20 hours of work a day for all these different clients because she's got these offshore people who are highly trained. So for example, if you break down our link building system, we do outreach based link building, which is very time consuming. We have people who only go out and find bloggers or bloggers online. That's all they do. That's all they do. They just go through Google, Instagram, and Twitter all day and they build spreadsheets of bloggers. That's all they do. We then have people who are responsible for contacting those people, outreach managers. That's all they do is they send and respond to emails, send and respond to emails, send and respond to emails. And then we have our link building SME on top of that, who she's in Thailand right now. And she just oversees this. She makes sure everything's running smoothly. She communicates with the clients. It's really not that hard to do. And like I said, we're able to just funnel clients through this, like an assembly line, just push them through, push them through, right? Keyword research, stamp it on page, stamp it. That one person, it's taking them one day to do each of those things. So we're able to scale, like I said, basically infinitely. And if we need to hire more capacity, we hire more of these offshore specialists. And eventually, of course, we'll need to hire more of these SMEs, but it's a lot cheaper to do this way. And it's a lot more profitable to do it this way too. So <clears throat> the problem with this is, is now you need a system to manage these processes, right? So this is what we call project management, right? Essentially, Project management is the process of managing temporary endeavors, i.e. a project that have a defined beginning, end, and scope and resources. I got that off Wikipedia. Don't kill me for it. So from an SEO point of view, it means that we're managing campaigns to make sure that we're meeting deadlines, exceeding expectations, and delivering results. So for us internally, project management is the system of managing our processes. So everything that I just covered, project management is the system of managing these processes. And it holds us accountable, and it just makes sure that we get stuff done, plain and simple. So why is project management so important? So like I mentioned, SEO is not about the latest tactic. It's about being able to execute them at scale. It's always overlooked by agencies simply because project management's not sexy, right? Everyone is so focused on like the new hot uh, tactic, but 
to be completely honest with you, SEO has not changed that much since 2011. The only thing that's changed is you just got to do it the right way. You got to cut out the crap and focus on quality. But that quality has those same metrics have been around for almost a decade now. So not much has changed, but you've got to be able to do it at scale. Like, like I said, especially if you want to make money. So SEO is unpredictable. PJM stands for project management. It gives you a framework to ensure quality and results for your services. Because with so many moving pieces that go into an SEO campaign, you will fail without a system of management. It's just a fact. Clients will hate you. You'll ruin your reputation. You will never get another client in this game if you have a poor service and you can't manage clients. So it helps keep clients happy too, which is really important. Working When working with clients, good project management helps to delay the ranking process. Like I said, if you have a plan for a client, if you just show them, hey, here's a 12 month plan for your website. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna adjust it if needed, You know, blah, 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 based on feedback. It gives them peace of mind. When you're paying somebody for a service, right? Like it drives me crazy now when I pay a vendor for a service and they're just picking stuff out of their ass. They don't have deadlines set. They don't have any of this stuff. I can't, it, it, there's no peace of mind for that. I don't want to work with you. But if you've got a system to manage projects and to show me that like, hey, I at least have a plan, you know, it helps to alleviate. It's just psychology. If you're showing, if you're constantly hitting people with deliverables, like, hey, here's keyword research. Um, hey, this is the plan for on page. This is how we're going to implement title tags. If you're just constantly sending this stuff to people while doing the SEO behind the scenes in the background, like SEO takes quite a bit of time to work, but you're constantly just peppering people with this stuff. At the very end of the day, even if you don't get results, they can't really say much because it gives you a built-in fail state because sometimes you just can't get results for SEO. That's just the way it is. If you want to sell something in competitive space, I'm sorry, dude, you picked the wrong business. I'll still take your money and I'm going to do you a good job for you. I'm going to do the best of my ability, but like, we might not be able to get you that first place ranking. We're going to do everything that we can. And here's the proof of it, right? Here's all the deliverables. Here's the plan. We hit everything according to plan. And you can go ahead and read any, go to Moz, read any blog online. You will see that we follow best practices. It just didn't work out. I promise you, like we have had clients where we haven't been able to get results because it's just too competitive, but that client wasn't mad at us because they understood that we did everything that we, that we did everything that we were paid to do. Right. And at the end of the day, you can't really complain about that. And you're not going to lose a client if you're doing what you told them that you were going to do. So let's look at how we manage it. So I want to show you how we do our tasks, deliverables and actions flow. So let me just open this guy up real quick. And so this is for, this is our, a sample. This is a burn file, uh, not our exact project management file, but this is like I just showed you, right? So this was the sample plan that we built for Cod. And after I build this, what I do is I migrate this into our internal tracking file. So we have an internal project management file that we use to manage all of our client campaigns. So you can see how I just have this filtered for one client here. And what you can see is these are the status codes here, right? So we run through these different statuses and after we mark them a certain thing. So for example, here, uh, let's say Maria uh, does the on-page corrections. What she does here is she marks this as review needed. And then what happens is using the magic and power of Google Sheets, you can see it automatically pushes here to this tab here. It's really amazing what you can do with Google Sheets, which I'm going to talk a lot more about anyway. So she made the on-page corrections. Then one of the SMEs goes in and reviews it and sends it to the client. It'll also pull through the link here for that what she worked on. So again, so this is the base project plan, right? And I can just show you, so get mine numbed here, but these are all the clients that we have, right? And this is our internal project plan that we use on a daily basis. So at any given time, I know the status of every single client campaign, every single one. I know what's being worked on. I can click the link. I can check the status. I don't, my operations manager does, but this is all being tracked at any given time, right? So let me just go back to this one client here now, just to simplify things for a little bit. So again, so after that's worked on, again, what happens here is you can see here, this is the, the tasks tab, right? So these are all the tasks. This is the deliverables tab that gets managed by, like I said, our subject matter experts that communicates this to the client. So after a task is completed, so again, let's say that Caesar finishes the link building strategy deck, he marks it as review needed, and it automatically is gonna get pushed here to this to, to review, and it's gonna get reviewed and then sent to the client. After that, right, so that's tasks, that's deliverables, that's how we manage those two things. After that, what we do is we'll build action items, right? So here's the, the same action items for this client. So this came off the back of the technical audit. So you can see here, we need to canonicalize things. This is the, these are the exact action items and who's the owner and who's responsible for it. Now, this is what's really, really cool about Google Sheets and the system that we built is that, so this is the individual client workbook. So like I said, this is our internal project file that manages all of our different client files. What we also wanna do is show these things specifically to our clients. So what we did is we built individual client files that are automatically synced with this. So for example, like I said, 
uh, the actions tab here. This actions tab is pulling directly. This looks familiar, right? This is pulling exactly from here, right? Uh, sorry. So let me just fill this again. So the client can log into their file at any time and they can see the status of open actions that they have. So for example, if I were to mark this one here completed, what's going to happen here? It's going to push and it's going to be completed. You see how that just marked completed. So now the client knows that this is done because we just marked it completed. So this is how we manage files. And it's the same thing with the project plan. So you can see here, the tasks tab, this is automatically also pulling from our internal file list tasks tab, right? So again, so if I mark this completed here, I never have to go into this client file and change it. You see it just marked it completed because it's automated. That's the power of Google Sheets, which I'm going to talk a lot more about in one second. So that's our system for doing it. The tasks, deliverables, and action items all in methods here. And we built this amazing system and built in Google Sheets to automate this. So I never have to go into a client file. I never have to do it. I never have to communicate with it. It's all hands-free pushes. I just manage everything internally using this one tab. These three tabs here manages the entire agency. All 40 plus clients are managed from that one tab and everything is accounted for at every time at any hour on any given day of the week, we know exactly what's going on. So that's how we manage that. Let's keep it moving here. So now let's talk about the tool. So I just briefly touched on it, but this is really where things get exciting for me. I'm kind of a nerd at the end of the day. So there's a difference between task and project management. So I am not here to badmouth any of these companies that I have below. They are all amazing. They all make a lot more money than I do, but they're task management systems. You as an SEO, as a marketer, as an agency, you need something more robust. You need a project management system. So what we've done, is we use the Google Suite for everything. We use Google Drive as a client portal, right? You can create files in there. Like I said, everything that we do is either in sheets, it's either in uh, slides, it's everything is built within the Google Drive and we just create folders for clients and then all their deliverables, everything is stored in that file and they have private access to that. So none of the other clients can have access to those folders. You just give email access, you can manage documents, you can manage everything. You don't need to use Dropbox anymore. You can just use Google Drive, it's amazing. We use Gmail as an email suite. You can get your domain registered through Gmail. Gmail is way better than Outlook than anything else, a hundred times better. We use Google Slides for presentation, no more PowerPoint. PowerPoint is slow, it's cumbersome. As you can see, this current thing is built in Google, Sli uh, Google Slides. We use Google Data Studio for reporting. That's a whole another can of worms that I'm not gonna talk about here, but no expensive reporting software. All this stuff is free to use, guys. It's 100% free. Uh, you can pay, well, you have to pay to use an email, but it's like eight bucks a month. It's something really cheap. And it's just way better to have everything centralized in one central place than having to use all these different fucking tools. Pardon my French. It's annoying though, right? Tracking all these logins, all this stuff. It's all tied to one email that logs you into everything. All of your team, all of your clients. It's so simple. Plus, you're already using Analytics, Search Console, AdWords as an agency. You're, you live in those tools. Why not just tie it all together? So the other thing is work is saved in real time. This drives me crazy. Like when people send me an Excel file or a Word document, you are no longer allowed to contact me. I won't open it. Like I don't want to download that shit, make a copy, save as, tr track changes, and then send it back through. It's so cumbersome, man. Like this, this crazy thing, it's called the cloud that allows you to work in real time. Like you never have to do that stuff anymore. It's such a waste of time. And again, what I haven't talked about here is time management, like wasting time and seconds and all this stuff and headaches, it drags you down and it's going to cut into your revenue. I promise you. So everything that you do as an SEO anyways, ends up in Excel or Google sheets, right? Like I have an amazing YouTube video that talks all about it. You should definitely check out my YouTube channel. It's 11 Google Sheets automations. Please check it out. It talks about all the different ways that we use Google Sheets internally, plus the Google Drive and all these different automations that are available to you. It'll really open your mind up and really blow your mind for what you can do with Google Sheets. And no, Google does not pay me. If anybody knows somebody at Google though and they want to sponsor your boy, please let them know. Give them my email. I'm happy to take their money. So let me just show you the power. What I want to do is I've never done this before, uh, but I want to show you how we onboard every single client in less than three minutes, right? So from the time that a contract is signed to building a project plan, to sending them a kickoff, everything, I'm going to show you that right now. Ready? So somebody get a timer out, um, but don't necessarily hold me to it. So again, like I said, the first thing I do is I come in here and I build a project plan. So again, let's say I'm doing this for cotton, right? I have the project plan built. Everything looks good. That's fine. This is in the templates section, right? Then I come back in here to my main client file. And what I did, what we did 
is we built in Google Sheets that allows us to add a client. So I come up here to this menu, I click add new client. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add, let's say I'm adding Cotton as a client, right? So Cotton, Cotton is a good SEO. It's Cotton. So I'm just adding in all this info. Let's just say cotton.io. Again, I'm not really going through this seriously, but then we have a link goal per month. How many links we wanna build him per month? Let's say 12. Then we put in a start date. So let's say he's starting on the 12, 12, 2018. Let's say it's a year contract. He's going to 2019. These dates are wrong. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just trying to get it done in three minutes and then cotton at cotton.com, right? So then all I do is I click generate client worksheets, right? And what this does now is it's automatically going to push him here into our client file. Just give it one second to create in the power of Google sheets and the power of Google drive. Everything that's going to happen here is it's going to add him into our clients tab, right? And it's also going to create a, there he is right here. It's going to create a Google drive folder for him automatically. Let me just open this up, right? It's going to create a Google drive folder for him automatically that only cotton has private access to. This is also stored within all of our client folder access and it automatically creates a client workbook specifically for cotton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and let me just show you. And this is what I showed you with this other client here about how we were able to automatically push these things individually. So you can see that this is active again, the power of Google sheets. It's really, truly amazing. It's software in itself and is way better than anything else that's out there. And again, what it does is it has all these tabs automatically created within it. And I'm going to show you how that works in a second. So then we have the questions here. What we do is we send clients onboarding questions It automatically populates these onboarding questions that help us get things kicked off for that client. Right? So then what I'm going to do, bear with me. I know I'm jumping all over the place is I'm going to migrate cotton specific project plan into our root project plan. Right? So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to come back here to our tasks tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste them in. Right. Oops, I pasted something wrong. Sorry. Let me just paste special. There he is. So you can see here, Cotton was added to our client's drop down here automatically. After I added him in using this menu, it automatically adds him in here. And then what it does is it's automatically going to push his project plan into here. Just give it one second to load. It's automatically going to push his project plan in here. So that way, when we update his project plan here, it's going to be hands-free management. So Cotton can come in here at any time and he can review his tasks. Just give it a second. It takes like upwards of a minute. It's going to automatically push all of his statuses up in here. So I never have to talk to Cotton. I never have to do anything with him. He just has to get access to this folder here and he can check these things for us. He can see what we're working on. What we also have is we have individual content. We have trackers also that track content workbooks sorry, content marketing and link building. Anytime that uh, in the, I'm not going to show you those files now, but anytime that we mark a link live in the link book file, it's automatically going to push the link here for hands-free reporting. You can see these, if you're, these query import ranges, what these are doing, and these are, these are talking across sheets. And this is going to automatically pull in any live link that we build, any live content that we build, any task that we do for cotton and any action item that again is all managed here from our central file. It's really, really, really powerful stuff and it's really easy to do. Finally, what I do, just let me show you what I do with here with, uh, with uh, the power of Gmail is the power of canned responses. So I have a canned response already built in here and it's getting started. And then I just send this to Cotton. I send this to Cotton and uh, I just change the name to, hey Cotton. And then what I do is this says, give me access to all your stuff, your logins. And then I change the link here. So this is where we say we use Google drive. I change the link. I paste this new link in here. This says, Hey, can you please fill out those discovery questions in your client workbook? You can access it here. I change the link. He automatically gets a link to our Calendly to schedule a client kickoff call. So we can talk on the phone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then this runs him through the project plan that's in his workbook that's already built out. And then he gets, also, all of our people that are going to be working on his campaign, their contact info, bang, I send it. I know I went a little bit over three minutes, but that's how we onboard clients. That's how we do it for our biggest clients. That's how we do it for our smallest clients. That's how we have scaled so fast. It's an amazing system and are launching all of these Google Sheets, this entire system, everything that I just ran through, plus a lot more is going to be available for you guys. So anything that I just talked about, the, automatic pro the automated project management tracker, the push and pulls across sheet files. You can customize it to your own process, to your own agency. You get content and link management files. So these are standalone spreadsheets that allow you to that sync with each other, that for hands-free reporting, pushing to clients, link building, content marketing, again, customize them how you want. 
you get pre-built project templates. So those project templates that I ran you through that I built for us, we have pre-built ones that are samples to get you started. Plus you get access to our training suite, which I'm going to show you right now, which gives you step-by-step -step training. So you get a free log, you get a log into our training suite. And what you do is you just come in here to our project management suite and we have all of these trainings built out for you yourself if you want to learn more so you just click here you get access to your sheets files and if you want to learn more if better yet if you want to train somebody to be a project manager for you this is what it is so we have all of these video trainings in here there's about 20 in there right now i'm still uploading another 20 again like i said i haven't even finished the training yet because uh, i've been rushing to get this done it breaks down how to use everything how to build project plans how to a lot more stuff too that i didn't even have time to cover in this webinar it's all in there and if you're interested in it again like i said this link here will take you to it. It's on our website. It's webers.org slash tools, and it's the project management tool. Again, that's webers.org slash tools. That's a project management tool. There's a pricing on there right now. It's going to go up as soon as I launch it. This is literally the, our new website went live today, and this tool went live today, and I'm still going to be adding to it. And there's a whole bunch of stuff, again, that I didn't get to cover because I didn't want to just come in here and sell you guys. I really wanted to give you guys something of value to take home and actionable for your agency, whether you want these tools or not. But that's it. It's on our website. Please check it out and please follow your boy on social media if you want to stay in tune with what I got going in the future. So that's what I got, Cotton. You can take it back. Whenever you <clears throat> that's uh, that's incredible stuff. You know, I'm like always amazed at uh, the processes you come up with because your mind works so differently than mine does. And I love it because it's new information that I can take and, and, and add to my agency.